I'm Nadine Caron. I'm here at Clayte Tenen Memorial Park in Prince George, British Columbia. It's the traditional and unceded territory of our Clayte Tenen people, uh, who we have a wonderful relationship with and are a significant part of our community. I am a general and endocrine surgeon, and my uh, jobs range from everything from associate professor at UBC Department of Surgery at the Northern Medical Program here in Prince George, as well as co-director for UBC's Center for Excellence in Indigenous Health. As Indigenous people, we hear a lot about how we're not well, how we don't achieve, how we don't graduate from high school, how we don't go on to post-secondary education. And this was just such a different example for me to be surrounded by, that not only had other Indigenous women gone through um, medical school before me, but they had excelled. There were not very many Indigenous medical students at the time that I went through medical school. Fortunately, we have a lot more now, which is exciting, and Nadine and I have been part of making that come to reality. Nadine had recently graduated from UBC Medical School, the same place that I went to, and not only had she graduated, she was the first female um, Indigenous person to graduate from the medical school and also had the gold medal for being the, you know, highest academic student going through the school. Then Nadine went on to a surgical residency, which is grueling, um, challenging, and competitive. And she did it with grace and still being a real human being and became the first female Indigenous cancer surgeon in Canada, which I think is just such a, another great example for her daughter, my daughter, and other you know Indigenous uh, girls of what they're capable of. I've been at UBC, or the University of British Columbia, uh, since 1997. Uh, first as a medical student, then as a general surgery resident, and subsequently as a faculty member. A, a great um, addition to my career path was when I met uh, the director and subsequently my mentor, colleague and friend, Dr. Matisse Santoshin at Johns Hopkins uh, Bloomberg School of Public Health at the Center for American Indian Health. Uh, he invited me to be part of the team there and I started uh, being involved in some of their projects. The curriculum was amazing. You saw incredible capacity building at the community level in research. So these communities were doing their own research for their own people with their own research questions. And it's exactly what we wanted to create in Canada. So I started bringing uh, students from UBC and UNBC, the University of Northern British Columbia, down to Johns Hopkins University when I was teaching these courses. And so in 2014, after extensive consultations with communities, both within the university and throughout the province of British Columbia, we were able to actually launch the UBC Center for Excellence in Indigenous Health. Another mandate at the Center for Excellence in Indigenous Health is curriculum. A curriculum that includes the indigenous history of our nation, includes the absolute necessity for cultural competency, awareness, sensitivity uh, for our healthcare professionals, not just in medicine, but across the board, uh, and making sure that as a center that we provide those resources, and we're working on that currently. It's a big task. Receiving the Thomas Dignan Indigenous Health Award is an incredible honor. Thank you. Um, thank you for having this award. Thank you for realizing the importance of what this award means. Um, and thank you for your support for Indigenous health. When I first met Nadine, her, her identity as an Ojibwe person was really important to her and came through and also caused me to feel, you know, to bring forward my identity as a Hulkamenum person to what I was doing as a medical student, as a resident, and now as a physician. It's a true honor to be an Indigenous physician. However different we might be, being Ojibwe uh, compared to uh, being Coast Salish or Seke Tene or, or um, you know, any of the BC First Nations, it, there's still a connection across Canada in that way. I think overall the different impact really is that you connect with them on that different level from the cultural level, and or at least you attempt to, and you respect it. I love that connection that's above and beyond practicing medicine, it's practicing wellness, um, and any Indigenous person would understand that difference. <laughs>